She's she's fast on the draw. <laughs> Gotta give me a couple seconds to get it going. So who are you? <laughs> um, my name is Catherine Heller, and I'm a technical evangelist um, on the Windows Vista evangelism team. Cool. And where are we? And what are we? Doing? And we are here in Building Nine with uh, some members of the Windows Shell team, who are going to to give us an overview and show us some of the really great features that are coming in Windows Vista uh, in regards to visualize, organize, and search. So, so maybe you want to introduce yourselves? Sure. I'm Cam. Uh, I'm Cam Kartal from the Windows Vista team also, and uh, I'm a program manager. So I'm going to talk about the developer story. Hello, I'm Paul Katzinger. I'm a program manager, also on the Shell team, and I'm going to be talking about the end user experience with search organized features. Very cool. Uh, I'm Mark Miller, and I'm a developer on the Shell team. Now I'll be talking about uh, developer extensibility. Awesome. So, so do you want to start off, um, what's the user experience like? So what does the user see when you um, execute Windows Vista and you're running it? What's the first thing they're going to see about working with the shell and working with the Explorer? Okay. okay. Be really great. So a couple things. Um, first, a lot of times what people do when they use Windows is launch programs and, and find applications. So, and uh, there are different documents. So I'll do that first. Here's Start Menu. Just open that guy up. Immediately what I can do. I think you just broke the record for starting a demo. And oh yeah, we got a demo. <laughs> <laughs> we got a demo. <laughs> All right, so there's a search box now in the start menu. And what I'm going to do is just start typing notepad, whatever it might be. And you can see up here, immediately it finds the programs that I'm looking for. So you can do things like look for remote desktop or look for all those little arcane um, uh, programs that you've never seen before and can't find very easily. And they'll just come up very, very quickly and very, very easily. Um, so that, that ability to get to things very, very quickly and easily is very common. So I'll, I'll launch the Search Explorer, and now I can just start looking for documents. So I want to find everything with forum in it. And you can see that I very quickly get my results set back way more quickly than you would have in XP. Really in XP fast. it was, um, you know, you saw the little dog yeah. come up and he'd like twiddle his foot for a while. There I had the results. Now what you're seeing here is a variety of things. It's your emails. It's your documents, your pictures, your music, all the stuff you'd have on your computer. Plus, it's all the stuff you have in your client-side cache. So if you have anything offline, then uh, it would show up here as well. So I, I have 1,300 RSS feeds coming into my Outlook. It would pull those up Heck as yeah. well? yeah. They'd show up in here. Mm. Yeah. OK. So, so, so is it searching on, on metadata there, or is it doing actually a search of the contents? Mm -hmm. It's doing a couple things. It's searching across the file names, the metadata on the files, and the contents so of all the, the... So you don't specify, you're doing the complete search, integrated right. search of all of those things. That's right. Oh, that's there, right. there are advanced ways that you can go in here and say I want less and mm -hmm. I want to do just the title and all that kind of stuff. So the default is just, just, just any way you just can search it. on, find our, it. Our, our principle for this is just remember anything about the file and you can find it. Okay. You don't have to remember, like, remember its location? Fine, you can find it. Remember something in the title? Fine, you can find it. Something you typed in? Fine, you can find it. Very cool. Um, okay, so Search, that's of course one way. We, we're really proud about the fact that we're going to be able to go beyond search and be able to use um, all the other tools that you're familiar with in the Explorer. So let's just go through the scenario where I go to the Documents Explorer and want to find my file that way. So I click Documents, and the first thing you'll see is this is a set of, it's a, it's a virtual folder, so it's got all of the documents across all of my user profile. Um, and in my client side cache and attachments for emails, all this kind of stuff. It truly is all of my documents now. And I can, Do, again. Now, does that get set up automatically when you, when you first load Windows Vista? Yeah, that's right. So you'll see this view here. Your documents folder is still there. Okay. You can still navigate through your folder and keep using that just like you always have. But Do you have to put documents in a specific place to have it show up in this virtual folder? All the places you normally put your documents, just things in your user profile. It okay. actually scans through all those locations. Oh, wow. Yeah, so there'll be no change for you. Okay. All right, so let's do that form thing again. So I do F-O-R-U-M, and it's done. Um, so I've whittled that list down from 400 and some down to three. So first of all, it's very quick that way. In XP, what I would have done to find those is I would first go to the right folder, um, and then I would have scrolled, and I would have looked for Fs in the name, and I would have found this one. But these two would have been really hard. Look, it's the third word and the second word. So if I scroll down to the Fs in the list, mm -hmm. Um, it wouldn't have found it so easily. And again, this is going through all the metadata in the files and the full text. What do you call that little area that you type the, the search into? Um, this is our quick search box. Quick search box. Yep. Okay, and it goes character by character. So if I, you can see as I untype certain characters, it'll pop back out to a broader search. So we think that that alone for many users is just an incredible win. 
like just over XP, now they can very quickly find their things, and then they could use their folder system just like they used to. Um, but we have more layers of, mm -hmm. of things. So another very usable version of this is I have authors and keywords. So we've basically taking, taken the main pieces of metadata and called them out separately. So if I open up keywords, you can see that this is automatically organized by the keywords on the files. And so all I had to do was, well, all I have is my files. Like if I was in Office and um, saved my files and they were saved with the metadata, it shows up here. If I tag them myself, it shows up here. Um, and then we automatically organize it. Do I have to choose one category or can I have a document belong to multiple categories or keywords? Uh, is that multiple. A, oh, so I can, and, it, and it's one physical location? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, oh, it's very much remember anything. Here, I'll show you that. So let's go into authors and I will go into, I don't know, let's go Flavius. All right, here's all my documents by Flavius. And another part of the remember anything about the file and be able to find it is I can remember like the colors or the shapes of it. Like here's that yellow thing or the green one or this one that has the fancy background. Um, but the other part is, um, as you were just describing, we can do more detailed things. So let me, let me do it this way. I'll click on authors and I want to show you how you can navigate down into Flavius as if it were like subfolders. So all the skills I learned in XP I can just keep using. So we call these stacks. These are all piles of documents by different, different authors and you can kind of see on the top of them what's inside. If I scroll down in here I can find Flavius. And also in the address bar, we call it the breadcrumb bar, you can see I'm in Karim's folder, virtual folders by author Flavius. So I can always see exactly where I'm at and I can use this to navigate around other places. So very much XP style, I just navigated into my um, my author. So that's the next sort of layer of things. A lot of users will do that. They'll just use these virtual folders and they'll navigate around and fantastic. Now some users um, will want to do more and so we have more. Um, you can do across the top here there's these header controls and this is where the more advanced user can drop this guy down and they can start doing things like well I only want to see finances and legal and now I can see these keywords for this particular author. Um, another way to look at this is if I group by the keyword and then here I'll show you the view menu too. Now I can see these documents even bigger because we really believe in this whole visualize so you can understand what's going on or I can shrink them down make them smaller and smaller and smaller. So I'll pick that size. Yeah. So that's really interesting when you're when you're zooming up there you're seeing that's not the standard generic document icon that you're showing there right when you're zooming up. Right we're showing thumbnails of the documents. Um, in this case Office has saved out the thumbnails. Um, and then in other cases we render the thumbnails. Do you have yeah. to have a new version of Office for this function? No, the old version of Office will do it. The old version of Office doesn't do it by default. So you have to, as you save the document, say I want to save the thumbnail with it. Okay. So yeah. it just stores a snapshot of that in the file and then it's just showing you the, yeah. the snapshot. Yeah. Sometimes you can never remember what you called something and you have to open it. And, that's right. And so that's right. That's very, that's very yeah. helpful. Uh, do developers need to do something specific to their applications to get these cool looking icons? Um, they just need to be able to save out a thumbnail there. Right. Well, well, yeah, that's that's sort of what, what my demo is about. Is um, the developers would need to um, write a thumbnail provider for their application. It's very pretty simple to do, actually. Um, I have a demo of it up here on the screen, where you can just implement um, two interfaces, um, two methods: uh, one to get your stuff from a stream, and one to return out your thumbnail. And you register that on your file type, and you get. Uh, then cool. you'll see that demo in a little while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I think, yeah, we were, uh, Paul, you were focusing more on the end user experience before yeah. then, so we can yeah. get into yeah. One of the questions you asked is, can well, I have got a it? lot of geeks watching this. I know. So one of the things that you asked a minute ago is, can I have it in two places at once? So here I have this green sort of looking PowerPoint. I can just drag this up into finances, and now you'll see that it shows both in finances and legal. And if I select it, selection shows them both. It's really one file. It just has both pieces of metadata. It has a keyword legal and keyword finances. And so now the user can just drag it into groups like that. I could have dragged it over onto one of these things, just like I would drag something to a subfolder. Um, and it automatically paints that metadata onto the file. Um, Is there any way to turn off the virtual views and see actually what's on the file system? Oh, of course. There's a couple ways. Well, first, here's your, here's your traditional folders right here. Okay. So I can always just navigate right into them. And this is exactly what I had in XP. Um, the second way to answer that question is you say, well, where is this really? Well, you can just right click on it and just say open containing folder and it'll take you right to the actual folder and where the file's at at any time. Good. Yeah. And if you 
if you drag that icon onto a, a USB key or a floppy drive or something, it like copies that. it. Yeah, it's the same logic that we use in XP, where if I copy it somewhere on the volume, it moves it, and then if I copy it off the volume, it makes a copy of it. So onto a USB key, make a copy, and you're good. Cool. Any yeah. uh, cool sh short uh, keyboard shortcuts that we need uh, to learn for this? My season? favorite one is the Windows key, and literally just hit the Windows key and start typing, and that does search. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty hot. Okay. Um, so I've showed you those things. Now, the other part of this is we have a fairly specialized experience in documents and then there's very in pictures as well. So now I can see different verbs, like I want a slideshow, ordering prints online. But at the same time, and, and all, these, all these folders here, now I have keywords and I can see all the sub-organization based on the pictures keywords now, right? Okay. So it's specialized in that sense. And at the same time, it's consistent um, because I still have this Word wheel box up here, and I can just type start, type start typing things into it, and I can navigate around and all that kind of stuff. So it's one set of controls and actions and gestures, but it's a very tailored experience for the so, each particular thing. So only my, my photos would show up in that, or images would show up in this. Explorer? Yeah, it's, it's all your pictures and videos. Yeah, okay. different types. Yeah. So let me show you a little more extreme example, very very quickly, um, just to give you an idea. As you start to hear from Karim and Mark you're going to see the kinds of things you can do in your applications. So here's an example where we did the same thing with the control panel. It's not about your files so much, but it is about your information on your machine. And so here I have all this stuff and I can just start typing display and, and very quickly this list starts to filter down just to the things that involve display. If I don't remember display, I might go resolution and I can find all the things with resolution in them, or background, or whatever it might be. So it, it's just about managing your information on your machine, your files, your programs, the different settings, or whatever you might have in other applications that people start to develop in the future. Um, one, one last thing I want to show you very, very quickly, and that is the common file dialog. So I'm going to launch Notepad, and I'm going to just save this guy. So the thing that comes up is the new common file dialog, and it's much more extensible and all this kind of stuff, and Krim's going to tell you tons of details about that. One of the key things is it's got the same kind of organization. So if I want to save this into, like, keyword advertising, I can just navigate there and do it, and you can see that the keyword advertising is getting filled in for me automatically. I could hand type it in down here if I wanted to, um, or I can just browse around and I can save it. So this is a really cool way for applications to build onto this system because all they need to do is um, call the common file dialog and all of a sudden they get all the benefits of being able to open and save um, their files. Okay. So the user can do that interactively. Now what if I had my application that wanted to be able to do that when I'm saving the file? Maybe I know something about yeah. the file and I want to add that metadata. Can I yeah. do that? There's metadata handlers that these guys are about to talk to. Let's jump yeah. over to that. I think this might be a good point for them to start sure. kicking so how, where so, so if I'm building an application, okay, so now we can talk to our developers out there who, <laughs> who want to know, like, yeah. how, how, how can they use this? Um, and I'm building an app, and I want to be able to maybe search or you know, bring some of that information into my application. What do you think are the, the, the main uh, areas where I can take advantage of, of, the, of these functionalities in my application? Well, uh, the, the first thing is you can actually uh, use most of the features that um, Paul was showing that's what we built in the uh, in the shell in your own apps. The first one is like search. Uh, search is like I actually built an app. Uh, let me uh, instead of talking, I'll actually show how this works. So let's cancel this one. And uh, so here, what I did is actually I built a, a very simple app. This is a um, this is a WinForms app right now. So what it does is it actually um, let me just okay. It uses a ADB, so if you know a ADB today, uh, you're all set up with actually ADO.net for managed developers, and uh, we have a connection string that you can actually connect to, and it connects to our uh, search engine. So, so with so these few, is, just before you, just to make sure I understand. Yeah. So, is is the is Windows is providing the search engine is providing an ADB provider? That's is that, correct. Is that That's what exactly you're what what I'm actually okay. doing here. Yeah. And because of that, it's uh, just you can use the same knowledge that you have in terms of build, building ADO.NET applications to search across uh, our index. So uh, let me actually just show this. Uh, here we go. Here, so this is sort of like a, a simple, I guess, a developer UI of the <laughs> of what we have in the in the shell. It's a, so here you have like a, a search box kind of thing uh, that I built. Uh, very simply, it's just a text box actually. You can go back, it kind of simulates the uh, word wheeling effect that we had. And uh, let me, uh, for example, type Brutus. We're using all these 
Latin names, I guess. Uh, so here we go. I actually got all the results back populated in the list view just uh, because I issued an ADO.NET query and I get the results here. And I can select one of these things. If I select these, now I'm getting all the metadata that uh, this document has. Uh, so part of the metadata, the file name and the file size is shown in this list view, but also more detailed metadata like the title, the author, the keywords, the comments are, are in here. The cool thing about this thing is that it's not read-only. It's not about just about search. It's also about being able to organize things. In order to organize things, the most important thing you need to do is to be able to, you know, uh, type in keywords, comments, tags, all those kind of things. So here in this app, actually, I enabled that one too. So you can go in here and just say, you know, let's change this comment to something else. Uh, great. Okay. So, so and I said, do, yes. I have to, do I have to know the file format? where that's being saved to, or where is that information being no, saved? No, actually, I... the, the great thing about this is we, we have an abstraction. Uh, so uh, it, when, it, when I say when I say, hit update, what's going to happen is it's actually going to find out a specific handler that's per file type that we, uh, some of them we ship in the box, like for the common ones, like the JPEGs, the doc formats, all the document formats, things like that, we ship them in the box. Uh, some others, uh, ISVs will be able to actually create uh, Mark is actually going to be able to talk about that. Create, he's going to create one for a recipe file format oh, cool. just a little later on. But the idea here is that as long as you have this metadata handler, uh, then, or a property handler, we call it, uh, you're, you're all set. Okay. That's the abstraction. So when, as soon as I hit update, it's going to actually update that. Now, if I do the same search here in the shell UI, let's see, Brutus. And uh, here we go, this was actually the one that I've changed it. Here the comment actually now shows great. So it updated it and the shell UI also shows the same comment. So from your app, you can write these organization type apps uh, uh, and also be able to search across these things. So this is one thing that's low level, like the search APIs, the uh, property APIs that we provide to the developers. I, I think this is really, really cool because you saw a bunch of ways where the user can browse and write their own metadata on this stuff, but applications now can do all sorts of algorithms on their data to figure out what the best keywords would be or the best ways to automatically do this stuff for users. And the more we can automate this as a whole Windows-wide ecosystem, it would be incredible. Like, this would be so much better for users. So what if I wanted to write in my app, I wanted to query some emails that I'd written. Would I have to go through Outlook to do that specifically, or would I be able to do it through the search? No, you're OADB? actually using this to the OADB providers, uh, because the idea is that everything, like including uh, Outlook, or other uh, third-party, you know, email applications can use our plugin mechanisms to actually plug into the search system. What we do is we actually index those mm -hmm. items from Outlook or, uh, you know, any other data source they might have, and put it into this one unified index that's in the in, in Windows. And ADO.NET ADO just basically provides a query back into that one. That's really cool. So I don't have to go in and know the Outlook programming model or the object model or Mappy yeah. to go in and find those emails. Absolutely, that's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so one other thing that we have is Paul actually just started talking about it is uh, is the common file dialog. Common file dialog, I think, is um, right now. I mean, if you look at uh, uh, existing ISVs, uh, some of them built their own uh, common file dialogs. Uh, the biggest reason for that we saw in, in, in the ISV community is that well, there was really not too much of a uh, customization uh, potential there. Uh, so it's the we basically shipped. Uh, uh, ex um, one uh, stock common file dialog, and that was it. That was only what you could use. Now in uh, Vista, what we're doing is actually we're allowing the ISVs to customize it, and uh, we're also creating a whole new set of APIs, actually, a much much richer set of APIs to interact with the uh, common file dialog. Uh, one thing I could show is I also build another app uh, that uses the common file dialog, and uh, let me just run this one. So this one is actually a very simple stock uh, um, Windows app. It's, it's just gonna, I'm just going to show you know some of the features of the common file dialog here. So uh, the the first thing is uh, the basic file open one. So you can just just like the Notepad was doing it, just using the APIs, open a file. You these are the standard things that you have today, and it still works in Vista. So nothing uh, earth sharing here. Uh, and the next but next step is common places. So one of the features in, in, in XP is that um, we have this area where uh, you have quick access mm -hmm. to the common places yeah, where you sit. Yes. 
uh, the problem with that one is again it wasn't extensible, so you couldn't actually add your own uh, place. So it was if you had like an app like Visio where you put your document uh, shapes, for example, you couldn't actually put that uh, in the, uh, without using uh, without building your own common file dialog. In this case, we actually make it extensible. So as you see, the new common places is uh, is actually uh, here. It's a uh, it's it's a more uh, scalable UI mm -hmm. too. It actually shows more uh, places for you to be able to extend. And here, in this case, I actually added music, my music, programmatically into this with the, to using our API. So it's not just a desktop or a computer that you've seen before. Now you can add music or any other uh, uh, place that you have for your own app. So that's that's one of the uh, again another uh, feature we have. Some some apps there they might do when they're opening, have a default save location, but they also might, in certain situations, have like templates. Mm -hmm. So in those situations, they would show their templates location in the common, style, in the common places. So it can vary within yeah. an app, too. So you, you don't have to be, it's not just people who are providing you know, this deep shell integration, but just, I'm just writing an app, I save documents somewhere, and I might have some place that I know makes sense for my users that they typically might want to just go directly there. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And now finally, let me just show the, the customization of the dialog. So in this case, uh, I added the, this uh, radio buttons under the common file dialog, so you can actually uh, add more content. So I'm going to change the, the title of the common file dialog from uh, Windows, uh, from Longhorn to Windows Vista, and then back to Longhorn. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, basically, in this case, uh, you can add your own logic here. You can add your own type of controls and you can uh, handle those events that those controls have so you can customize it with your with the data that you want to get from your uh, from your app into your app how much room do i have to add controls to the to the dialog is there so a limited amount of space or does it grow it, it will actually it, it will actually grow uh, like for example the, if you add just one control we would and if it's a button we would actually be smart about it and put it here mm -hmm. um, Right uh, beside open, uh, we will put that. So it's we're trying to optimize the space too by, uh, you know, if if you have one place, then uh, putting it into a right, uh, better uh, uh, area. And and yes, it will grow uh, as the number of uh, controls you add. Obviously, you don't want to add too many right, controls, you know, otherwise sure. it gets <laughs> like, for example, in this screen, it will be a little you don't too big. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So uh, so these are um, the two um, uh, big areas where. Uh, we're allowing ISVs to use some of the shell services, mm -hmm. some of the window uh, Vista services in their own applications. So now, uh, if you if you were, you were showing all the so you have those metadata that you're calling in the in the integration with the with the Explorer. What if I'm providing my own file formats? You mentioned that you're you're going to be shipping in the box some of those property handlers. Is that what you call them? Property handlers. So that's correct. for being able to add that integration, how would, now if I have my own file formats, how do I get that integration with the Windows Shell? Well, actually, probably Mark can actually show you his uh, recipe sample. It's well, a pretty cool sample. Okay. So well, I, I have um, here. Let me just switch the monitor input because um, I guess the, this one's too too much flicker. So I have here uh, as just an example of what what uh, a user might get. Um, just kind of out of the box. You've got the thumbnails, as you saw earlier. And you can, you've actually, I don't think anyone's shown the reading pane yet, um, but there's this uh, preview pane where you can uh, sort of have sort of live previews of the stuff that, that's in your document. Um, and for, like, for images, we show thumbnails. Um, and then down here, you have the properties that you can edit. But here is my, here is my own file format, the recipe file format. And by default, I really don't get very much um, because the system doesn't know how to extract any of the content, so I can't search over it. Um, I don't know how to edit uh, the, the stuff. If I try to apply a keyword, the system will say, well, I couldn't, I couldn't interpret this file type, so I couldn't actually apply any metadata to it. Um, so uh, what I've done is I've go, gone ahead and implemented a property handler over the, this recipe file format. Um, and the property handler uh, looks, it's, it's very simple. What it does is it maps back and forth between property names and property values. And it's got a get value function and a set value function. And um, I've also written a thumbnail provider for it, as well as a, um, as a preview handler. So the final so, result, uh, yeah, please. Can you just, go, uh, can you just um, tell us a little bit more what that means? Like what the, the, so you talked about a property handler. That's mm -hmm. the one that's going to give you the 
read write of metadata in your file formats? Right, right. Uh, I can show you the yeah. interface if you like. Yeah, if you could just, I think if you could just be a little more like, so what, what are the different elements of extensibility and what do they provide in the shell? So okay. I, heard you said, I heard you say three different right. areas. Right, very well. Um, so to get, these, to get these thumbnail images of the recipe, the pictures of the recipes, um, you know, for the beef chili recipe, I have a picture of beef chili. To get those images, I wrote a thumbnail provider okay. and registered it on the file type. And, and the responsibility of that thumbnail provider is to provide that snapshot? Is that what, that's right. that's what it does? It okay. takes as input the stream that contains the uh, recipe file, in mm -hmm. my case, and then it gives as output the thumbnail image. Okay. Uh, and then as the shell is rendering this view, it asks for each file, please give me the thumbnail mm -hmm. for it, and it looks up who the right thumbnail provider mm -hmm. is for that file. And so it's up to the provider to determine what they what they show, whether they persist it in the file or not. Could they do that's, it live? Is that's that, right. They could do a live rendering of it okay. um, if, if that's if that can be cheaply done. Obviously, mm -hmm. if you take a lot of time yeah, to compute the thumbnail, is then you don't want to be <laughs> right. Then you'll you'll hang Slow the UI. Up. Yeah. So um, so that was a thumbnail provider. Then you also mentioned now that so then the the property handler was about getting the Persisting right. the, the properties? That's right. Um, so the, so for the, what the property handler enables is, if you notice when I mouse over this file, um, I, I see some custom things. I see not only the author of the recipe, but how difficult it is, what its difficulty rating is, medium in this case, yield, eight servings. So these are my own custom property that are only applied to recipe files. If, clearly if I mouse over a music file, it's not going to say that it yields eight servings. Mm -hmm. So the provider that I registered um, for, this, for this file type, uh, part of the registration mechanism said, oh, in a tooltip, please show these things. And likewise, there's some other places, like the preview pane here. Uh, it not only shows the difficulty and the yield, but it shows these keywords. And then it shows the prep time, 15 minutes, and the cook time, two hours. Uh, this is going to be good chili because cooking for two hours. Uh, I like to cook my chili for a day. but uh, that, I, I, so, And then not only that, I can, also apply, uh, um, I can also apply metadata to it. So in that case, I clicked the beef chili recipe, and I said, oh, that's a four-star recipe. So I rated it at four stars. Um, so that's, uh, that, that's what the... Um, uh, that's, oh, did I click on the wrong one? Oh, this is this directory. So the other thing that I've registered over the file types is this preview handler here. Um, so uh, that allows me to, um, again, it's just like the thumbnail handler. It takes in the uh, input stream of the recipe, and instead of outputting a thumbnail in this case, it, outputted, it outputs a, a window. Uh, that can be interacted with. So for example, I can actually select in here and copy things out and paste it. And so really, by just implementing these three handlers, I've sort of built kind of a whole recipe application that uh, a user can use just entirely within the rest of the user experience. Um, and one, one other thing I'd like to show is because these metadata handlers, these property handlers, um, expose the file's content in a way that is consumable uh, through this abstraction that Karim uh, talked about, uh, I can do all of the search and organize stuff over my recipe files. So I have an example here where I have my recipes stacked by author. So for example, I can go into all of the Alton Brown recipes. I have a bug right now where the thumbnails aren't re rendering. Um, but I can go in the Alton Brown recipes and see the ones just by Alton Brown. I can go back. I can expand keywords and say, oh, I just want the ones with eggs and fish. Um, because I have lots of eggs and fish hanging around my house. Uh, and or you, you know like the ones that are re related to chili, you know I, I can do all of those experiences over my own proprietary file format because I've exposed, I plugged into the uh, Windows in that way. Can I have your file format for my, my to run in my PC in my kitchen? <laughs> <laughs> I'd really like to be able to do that. You don't know what to make for dinner, and just get right to it with it with querying the metadata. Right. That's really cool. So if you so you mentioned three different areas for. For customization, you mentioned the property handlers, the the thumbnail providers, and the preview providers. Did I get those right? The preview the handlers. Preview yeah. handlers. If I was, if I'm a developer and I have my own file format, which one should I do first? Uh, I think the biggest bang for the buck is the property handler, okay. uh, because that allows you to participate in the search experience. Okay. Um, I could pull up a thing and search for the keyword egg or blend or something, and uh, and, and get, get the files, um, and you, you know, if I had an icon registered over it, I'd still see some sort of visual mm -hmm. over that. Um, I think probably next after that is the thumbnail handler, because it just it has a lot of visual yeah. impact. 
And then the preview handler would, would be my third yeah, actually, priority. In, in this release, we made the uh, uh, building these tunnel handlers much simpler. Okay. In the previous uh, releases, it was we had the functionality, mm -hmm. uh, but right right now we have a much simpler interface. So I think uh, developers will have uh, easier time actually building these things in this release. Mm -hmm. So, so I, I know that how difficult is it to to write a property handler though? I mean, you have to implement some you have to implement a com interface or two, and is it something I would do in managed code, or do we? Well, you know, what, how would I go about doing that? Well, the, the property handler interface, if I could just show you some code here, it's actually a pretty simple um, interface. It's uh, just, just kind of like a, a dictionary. You get the count of items, uh, get value. Uh, th these are the methods right here. Get count, get at, get value, set value, and commit. So these are what I would, this is what, these are the methods that I implemented mm -hmm. over my property uh, handler. Um, so, uh, you, you know, um, there's a few guidelines that we have that I could go into. For example, we property handlers should generally support open metadata. In other words, they can accept any property being set on them so that, um, you know, if I want to stamp a four-star rating on the file format, then it can accept that number that says four stars, the rating is four stars. And um, if we want to enable other features like that, or keywords, uh, if it can, we want to stamp arbitrary keywords on, on an item, uh, a property handler that supports open metadata can have these totally opaque to them properties being set on mm -hmm. them and store them away in their file format somewhere. Um, but if you can't support open metadata because it doesn't make sense for your format, we have a fallback uh, property handler that you can use that will actually stamp the properties into a secondary stream on your files. Um, the, the drawback there being you can't then, uh, the user gets a bad experience when, um, when copying to a pen drive or something that doesn't support secondary oh, streams. So they lose that, that information when they, they copy it over? Right, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, there's a lot, some trade-offs that, that sometimes have to be made, but it, it seems very exciting uh, with, with how you can, what, what I find very um, impressive is the fact that you the, your recipe files, um, you know, completely controlled by you, thought up proprietary file formats, and it looks like it's part of the, the Windows Vista shell. It's great. I'm very excited to see. I'm, I'm just really looking forward to working with this stuff and organizing my recipes <laughs> that way. It's really <laughs> awesome stuff. Yeah. Thank you. really good. Yeah, thanks. thanks. So is that it? Yeah. Got any more? Oh, there's tons more. <laughs> there's tons more. How, long, how much time? <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> the viewership goes off after this, but uh, um, what else do we need to know? How much, how much of what we're seeing is actually going to be in the final, the final product? Are we seeing 80% of the final product here, or over the next few months, is the UI experience going to sh change a whole lot? Um, there, there will be changes um, for beta 2. Mostly their usability changes, performance tuning, uh, getting the rest of the API just really tightened up. So it's it's really refining from here. Right. Con yeah. Conceptually, everything is pretty. That's solid. right. Right. I mean, we want to change some of the semantics of the H results. You know that you yeah. right, return from your functions or that kind of a thing. But the concepts are are, are solid. Now, uh, which version are we seeing here? Is this beta so, two bits or so is this PC the one actually I showed it runs on beta one. Okay. Uh, so uh, the one that Mark was showing uh, is uh, is on beta two. So yes. the thumbnail handlers and the preview handlers actually came in uh, in beta two. Very cool. But the property handlers are for are, would work for beta one. Yep. Yeah. Is there any performance uh, issues that users you know do you need a fast hard drive or do you need a really killer video card to do this stuff? So or is this, this is just running on a standard tablet PC, this is, right? Yeah, this is actually a tablet PC what? right now. So we're not even seeing the cool uh, glass interface. Right. The demo that I just showed was over remote desktop. Um, the, the only reason why you're not seeing the cool glass on this tablet right now is because the, the video card, uh, we just don't have the right video driver on this one. Well, yeah. It's just a bug drive, so once it comes in, so you'll see. Yeah, no, I have that tablet. So you already were seeing with your guys. <laughs> yeah, other than that, it's just that with PC, it probably has a 5400 RPM drive. It's running pretty fast. Oh. and uh, Why do you, why do you call you guys, why, do you, why is it called the shell? What, where did that come from? The shell? Oh, that's an interesting question. Mark, <laughs> we, we slip and say the shell. Um, it's kind of it's kind of funny. We have um, we, we, it's just legacy. We've been called the, the shell team uh, for forever. Um, but you know we'll get we'll we'll get people emailing our our team aliases saying, oh, I have problems with with the command shell because you know the echo yeah. command doesn't work in this build or something like that. And it's explaining, yeah, no, actually we're the explorer. Uh, so when we talk externally, we try to use the term explorer, but yeah. as we've done today, kind of slip up and say shell every once in a while. Even because, some of our interfaces still use a shell, yeah. so we're kind of. Uh, between shell, I guess it's 
yeah. yeah, historically that way. But it's still it's still more it's more than the, the explorer, right? Because I mean, it's the start menu and the desktop mm -hmm. and all of the. All right. the yeah, it's like the, the so UI, the, the top line UI. What the yeah. user is actually working with. Yep. Yeah. Yep. What else do we need to know about the, about the explorer? Um, I think you guys have done a pretty good job. It's, it's really exciting to see this work. It's the first time I've really had a good good shot at it. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Um, well, you're gonna see it over and over as you get into like the sync manager or you get into software explorer, the new add or remove programs. All these things use the explorer and use all the tools you just saw. So it's, it's all about that providing a consistent experience over very specialized data, specialized yeah. ways. Today we mostly so just keep digging in. Today we mostly actually focus on the search organized visualized features of the shell and uh, there's like synchronization manager, there's a, a new wizards system that we're coming up with which we call the arrow wizards. Uh, there's like uh, the new uh, message box that we're coming out with, uh, uh, we're calling it task dialogues. Uh, we're going to be talking about those uh, uh, at the PDC too. And, yeah. uh, uh, oh, this so video is being held for the PDC. Okay, so, so you'll, yeah. <laughs> I guess. We're slowly watching. seeing all the cool stuff that the, the PDC is going to show yeah. on. Yeah, there, there's going to be a lot of other exciting places for developers to plug in as well. Um, like the, and especially in the search infrastructure, so Karim briefly mentioned, you know, Outlook plugs in their data source to the infrastructure, but how would a third party like Outlook or with their own data source plug in their data so that can be searched over? Uh, and I, th I believe one of the PDC talks is That's what's going to address that as well. Yeah. How, how scannable is this? Can I come up with my own really weird Yu-Gi-Oh skin for uh, the search dialog boxes, or am I stuck with the Windows pre-designed look and feel? Well, we let you put your stuff into our Explorer. Or, because of the things we've given you, you can write your own app and do whatever you want with the, the look and feel of it. But basically, it's the, the Explorer look and feel. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he, it, I bet in a year when Ed Bot gets his book out, he'll have tons of tips and tricks. What, what do you expect? What are you guys learning about the Explorer that you know, are power user tricks for, for getting around? Um, the thing, the thing I find surprising is the power user tricks seem to be everyday user tricks. Like just using that word wheel control, it's so hard for me to go back to XP. Um, the Windows key on the start menu yeah. makes it so hard to browse through the flyout. It's, just, it's those things, and I, and I don't really think of them as power user things, which is sort of weird. Yeah, I never do. I never do start run anymore, right? right I yeah. just do start, and that 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 bo that edit box in there, I can type and progressively search through my documents, and yeah. if I, I can start and then type note, and it's like notepad. Right. Oh yeah, that's what I want to execute. Uh -huh. It's it's just, I'm, I'm totally addicted to that. I, I also think that people will start using virtual folders in uh, very interesting ways. Like what Mark was showing in terms of his recipes, you can do, you can create these really interesting queries against your data, and you know you leave it there, and you get more results coming in in time. And uh, it's going to be interesting. Like people, uh, I'm looking forward to see people, you know, coming up with these cool new uh, queries against their data, and and you know publish them to other people to see stuff right. like that. It will be very interesting. Right. Um. Is there any index latency? You know, if I come up with a, a thousand new files and put it on my file, does it take a while for it to index and be searchable? So it is. Uh, we're making it really fast. I mean, fast. We're working on making it really fast. And in beta one, uh, we're still not exactly there, but uh, going forward in beta two and uh, in the release candidates, it's going to be. Uh, almost instantaneous for most cases, but obviously, if you're you know copying and you know thousands of items, there's going to be latency, right? So, yeah. uh, but we're trying to minimize that. But for few items that you're uh, you know uh, you know hundreds of items you're writing in, it will be very fast, and uh, very cool. we're putting lots of effort into that one. Yeah. What I'm saying is that it's going to really reduce the time it takes to find a file yeah. because that you know when you just oh, yeah. don't know where it is, you can't remember what you called it, and and this just like dire direct access. Very exciting. Well, very cool. Thank you for uh, taking some time out of your busy schedules to show this to us. Not a problem. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.